Hi, this video will cover the allowance method versus the direct write-off method for handling uncollectible accounts, also known as bad debt. So keep in mind that some businesses will allow their customers to pay on um, account, also known as credit, and basically that means that in the future, you will have to, the customer will pay the person back um, in exchange for getting the product or service now. However, just because you have the right to collect cash in the future doesn't guarantee that you will collect this amount from your customers. So there's a risk involved in allowing customers to pay or buy purchase items on account. So what we're going to do is there's two different ways to um, handle this. And in this process of handling it, um, one of the things I want you to keep in mind that there are several accounts that we're using. The first one is net credit sales, um, this is 90000 This would be your sales minus any contra revenue accounts. Accounts receivable has a normal balance of debit, so 12900 You pull up the T account, you'll see it on the debit side for AR. Allowance for doubtful account is at 100 and I like to use allow for the number four and DA doubtful accounts because it's such a long name. And this is a contra asset. It's on the balance sheet, offsets accounts receivables. However, um, it has a credit normal balance because it's offsetting another account. And we're at 100 for our credit balance. So using this information, we will see how it works with the allowance method using it based on a percentage of net sales, specifically credit sales. Um, some companies will take overall sales because that includes cash and credit sales. Some companies will solely um, focus on the credit sales. This particular company's rule of thumb is 1% of net credit sales. Good news is you don't have to figure this out. It's usually an experienced person that will tell you the rule of thumb used to estimate their uncollectible accounts or doubtful accounts. So what we'll do is we will debit bad debt expense for the amount of accounts we expect not to collect. And we will credit the allowance for a doubtful account. I'll spell it out this time. Doubtful accounts. And keep in mind, doubtful accounts, you, you're you saying that you might not collect them. So it's not a guarantee one way or the other. And you'll credit that. Now the amount will be based on that 1% rule. So we'll just simply take 1%.01. .01 and we'll multiply that by the amount of credit sales, net credit sales, which is 90 grand. So we come up with 900. And after we come up with 900 for the debit, we know our debits must equal our credit, so we will credit allowance for doubtful accounts for the 900. Now with that being said, um, currently um, we would go ahead and credit the allowance for doubtful account with additional 900. And then we would go ahead and debit the bad debt expense for um, additional 900, but we don't have it listed up here, so we're not going to worry about posting at this point in time. Now, for the percentage of AR, it'll be similar in terms of the account. However, how we calculate the amount will be a little different. So we will debit bad debt expense for the percentage of AR method for allowance method and we will credit allowance for doubtful accounts. Now the question is for how much? The rule of thumb here is based on AR not on net credit sales. So keep in mind that accounts receivable is a permanent account. It's on the balance sheet. Balances go up and down. We don't close it out. Whereas the sales is a temporary account. It's on the income statement. We close it out at the end of the period. So because we are calculating it based on a permanent account, what we're first going to have to do, step one, is we're going to have to determine the calculated amount by taking, let's see, 10%. So let's go ahead and do equals 0.1, which represents 10%, 10%. And we're going to multiply that by our AR balance, which is currently 12900 and it came out a dollar. I'm just going to change it to decimals since we don't need to do dollar signs in our journal entries, nor um, do we need it for our GL. Let's assume US dollar. 
under the monetary unit assumption. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue. So 12,900 is the um, portion of, of the allowance for doubtful account that we expect based on the current balance of AR. So if that's the case, what we've done with this calculation is we've actually calculated the adjusted balance. So this is the adjusted balance of the allowance for doubtful account. So this is what we want the balance to be. Our adjusted balance is 1290. Now to get our adjusted balance, we have to consider what we already have in the account. So since we have a credit amount of 100 and we want it to be a credit of 1290, we're going to have to take the difference. So we'll take the 1290 minus the 100 and that 1190, that'll represent the adjusting entry. So the 1190 is the amount that we're going to debit the bad debt expense for the 1190 and then we'll credit the allowance for doubtful account for the same 1190. And that way we will um, adjust our balance to what it should be based on our calculation. So with the percentage of AR, you must consider the a allowance for doubtful account balance. And if the balance were in fact, this time it's, it's, it's on the credit side, but if it were on the debit side, then you would have to actually add it to figure out the amount of the adjustment. Because again, the normal balance of the allowance for doubtful account should be a credit amount. And over here, when you're doing it based on percentage of net sales, you would just ignore the allowance for doubtful account balance. Because whatever you calculate is actually the amount of the adjustment. So that's the difference between the two. And um, if we keep moving right along, and what happens when it's time to write off an actual account? Again, this is like we are trying to match our expenses to the same period in which we recognize the revenues. So under the expense recognition um, principle, this is required. This is um, under generally accepted accounting principles, so we can follow accrual basis of accounting. But what happens later on down the road, we find out that customer A, who owes us $250, is we're trying to collect, we've been calling and to no avail, and we're just like, you know what, you need to pay us our money, and they're saying, you know what, we can't. We're filing bankruptcy, we don't have anything. So at that point in time, we must basically acknowledge the fact we're not getting the money. So at that time, we're going to write off the account. So to write off the account, we will debit the allowance for doubtful account. That's decreasing it. We're using up some of the cushion, the estimate. So we will debit it for the 250. And again, I just threw that number out. It's just any customer balance. It could be whatever. Um, I just put use 250 on the handout as a made up number. Then we would credit the accounts receivable account, which is the core control account. And we would make sure that the individual customer, customer A, or whatever the customer's name was, that we would make sure that their account was written off. So we would reduce it by the amount of the write-off, which is the 250. So then what does it look like before and after? Our accounts receivable balance, again, it started off at 12,900. And then the allowance itself was Let's see, normal balance was 100, and then we had our adjustment for 900. So currently, our allowance for doubtful account is 1,000. So when we calculate our net realizable value, you take the amount of the AR, you subtract the contra asset for 1,000. So our um, net cash realizable value is 11,900 before we do the write off. And then after we do the write off, it, that 12,900 debit balance will be reduced by the credit of 250 and then the um, 1,000 uh, see balance will be reduced by the 250 debit because the normal balance of that account of course was credit and so now we're at 750 and then we'll do our formula and I'm just going to copy this control C control V as in Victor and you'll see the before and after for the net cash realizable is exactly the same. So we are expecting to realize 11900 of the 12650 from our accounts receivables. 
we may get right on the money or we might get a little bit less a little bit more we don't know but materially this is what we're expecting to collect of our accounts receivable balance now for the accounts receivable under the um, let's see the method is under the percentage of AR method we would still be using um, the same accounts receivable balance but again our um, accounts or allowance for doubtful accounts started off at a hundred and then when we added in our adjustment for 1190 we were at 1290 and under this method our net cash really lies value would be the 11,610 and then the write-off would be exactly the same whether it's based on percentage of sales or um, based on percentage of um, AR so afterwards, we're talking about a decrease of 290, I'm sorry, 250. And we're I'm talking about a decrease of our allowance for Dalfo account of 250. And our net cash realizable value will be 11,610. It doesn't change before or after. And, and that's basically the difference between the two methods. Now, if a company by chance says, you know what, I'm not following GAP, uh, my AR balances or my write-offs are so small, doesn't really make a difference, I'm going to use a direct write-off method, they can do that if it's not material. Um, you would just, and when you write off the account, you would debit bad debt expense for the 250 and then you would credit accounts receivable because there is no um, allowance for doubtful accounts so it's a little bit different than the allowance method so accounts receivable would be credited here and of course the specific customer account name um, should be addressed but the 250 goes directly to the expense and that's why it's not gap is because the expense is being recognized at the time of the write-off rather than the time of the original sell so that concludes this video if you have any questions please ask in um, the discussion thread or on Google Hangout. And remember, today is a great day to learn accounting.